So welcome back. So tonight, the point of view is continuing our delve into the 2022 financials of our 23 deposit money banks. Now, these banks released their statements end of April 2022, 23 actually. And tonight, we're going to look more closer at their performances. Now, what happened was when we did the first show, a lot of you responded and said, look, this is great work, but you tended to focus only on the negative. We actually ended the presentation with a positive slide, right? This was the positive slide we ended with. We said to you that even though the banks had made a lot of losses, there were some bright spots. Now, these five were the five top performers, GT, Societe Generale, FBN, UBA, and First Atlantic Bank. Now, what we're going to do tonight is to tell you what they did right. That's one of the things we do, tell you what they did right. We'll also try and see if we can aggregate some of the banks. So it appears the Nigerian banks are doing something right. Not all of them. In the top five, we have four Nigerian banks. So that's a story in itself. But there are also some Nigerian banks that are not doing too well. We'll also show you the loan book of the banks that publish their notes. Now, usually, these banks publish their financials in the dailies, which is like a summary of their performance for the year. There's a profit and loss, there's a balance sheet, and then an income and loss statement. Uh, and then, the, yeah, but the, the notes for these banks contain deeper dives into what the banks are doing. About nine of the banks release their notes. So those nine will show you who they are lending to, whether they are lending to government alone, they are lending to industry, they are lending to agri. We'll find out. And then we'll conclude by telling you 10 important observations about our sector. So we have a long way to go. So these are the top five, GT Bank, SG, FBN, UBA, First Atlantic Bank. Like, what is GT Bank doing right? For which reason it made the most profit in 2022? All right. Established 2006 under Kufuor. This has 36 branches. Nigerian Bank, no surprise there. They made a profit. Now, let's look at their behavior in terms of profit. Again, we start from 2016. Very modest profit of 107 million. Then they rise to 128 million. They keep rising, 215 million 2018. 2019, 300 million. This is pre-COVID. A lot of people thought COVID would wipe out the banks. It did not. It actually strengthened them, 385 million. This story is similar for all the banks we reviewed except a few, and I'll show you that bank soon. In 2021, all the banks peaked profits in 2021 except one or two. We found out why this happened, and we'll explain at the end of the show. So from 2016, the banks were all rising, and then, of course, the big problem took place. Now, this is 2022. They didn't go down. They still made a healthy profit, 191. This profit is even more than their 2017 profit, right? So the story of the first five banks, the five biggest banks in Ghana by way of assets, was one of big impairments and big losses. That's not the case for this bank. We need to make a couple of quick corrections. So last week, our analysis, we sort of confused the definition of assets and deposits. And I'm sure those of you who know banking saw that it was a slip. So really, a bank's assets are its loans. That's very interesting because accounting is not like normal English. So when a bank lends money, it's an asset because they're expecting money from it. But the bank also has investment, it has equipment, it has cash. All those count as assets. Now, a bank's liabilities, on the other hand, in English, you say, ah, it's a liability. Well, the shareholders' capital is a liability because they need to work with it and pay back. And then when people deposit money in the bank, it's also a liability. So that's one important correction that needs to be made. But the story here is that although the big five banks in Ghana, in our review previously, all went into the red in 2022, GT Bank did not go into the red. They had a lower profit than 2021, but it's still a very healthy profit. When you go further into the numbers, profit before tax only fell by 60%. So yes, you can say profit fell, but it wasn't a loss. This is very good. Customer deposits rose from four to six billion. So people were sending them money, right? Let's look at their assets. Again, there was an increase there. You have assets increasing from five to seven billion. Now, this is total assets. This, so this is not just loans and advances. It also includes other things that we mentioned earlier. 
profit tax margin always behaves like profit before tax. So there's no problem there. Now, last time we spent a lot of time talking about this, and I got some feedback on this. A lot of the bankers were saying, look, loan deposit ratio should not be seen only from the perspective of lending money they receive. We should also look at it as a protection against being illiquid. So essentially, they're saying that if we receive 100 CDs and we lend out 100 CDs, we will not have any money for emergencies. So the trick is not to lend out everything you receive. The trick is to strike a balance between lending some of what you receive and keeping some for a rainy day. That's true. But our view is that the African average of 75% is much, much higher than our average. Apart from one or two banks, most of the banks had a loan deposit ratio of below 50%. So when they receive 100 CDs, in the case of this bank, the best performing bank in Ghana, their loan deposit ratio actually reduced from 44% to 36%. So for every 100 CDs they received in deposits, they only lent out 36 CDs. That's not good enough. But at least this bank has shown some financial prudence. Capital adequacy ratio, very good, 33%. I mean, the minimum is 13. Regulatory forbearance could take it lower. So this bank is sitting pretty. They are doing very well. Now, don't let this number confuse you. This number is a percentage. So even though their impairment was also big, it didn't hit their profit that much. And we'll explain why. Now, the impairment is a percentage. This analysis of their income statement is basically telling you how things did this year compared to last year. So compared to last year, the impairment of financial assets was very, very big. So you say, wow, this bank didn't do well. But the real insight is here. Actually, it's here, right? Now, if you look at their income or interest income, banks' income is from their interest, right? Because they sell money. So if you sell bottled water, the money you get from it is your income. For a bank, you sell money. And the interest you get is your income. So it's very simple. Now... If you break it down, their, their major source of interest income is loans they give out. So this is what you want to see with a bank, right? This black bar is loans and advances. Now, money market placements are essentially placements with um, financial institutions in trying to... Um, invest in securities of different kinds. You notice that this beige bar is very low. So this bank will argue that we are actually doing financial intermediation. We are taking money from those who have excess use of it, who don't have use for it necessarily now, and we are lending it to the real sector. So this is great. So the figure between 2016 and 2022 came down. Their exposure to securities was not that high, all right? So we look at loans and advances and then investment securities. Even though the figure looks big, the percentage is where the answer lies. So their exposure is not that big, which is why the bank's profit was not impaired. So this is a good, a good model for a bank. Later on, we'll look at its loan book. A loan book essentially is talking about who it lends money to. There will be a few clues there. Let's look at another Nigerian bank. It's also in the top five performance for the year. Established 2005, 29 branches. The average branch network for these banks is around 30. It's a Nigerian. That means that the shareholders are, or its capital largely came from that country. We separate Nigeria from foreign. If you're an African, you're still a brother. So they made a profit. This bank's profit trend is different from the others. A lot of the banks we analyze, their profit rose, and then in 2022, it went down. Bang. This bank is different. So what did they do? So they started in 2016 with a rather healthy profit. And then it's almost like things are cooling down, right? So 2017, 315. 2018, 213. And this is millions, by the way. 2019, recovered a bit. 2020, very, very, very modest profits by industry standards. Look at 2021. Most banks had their green in 2021, except these guys. So these guys are probably thinking outside the box or doing something counter-cyclical. We don't know. But in 2022, yes, they took a hit. But again, this hit is not as severe as the others. 
right? So let's go behind the numbers. Their profits dropped by 58%, but still a profit nonetheless. Customer deposits rose by a billion. Total assets rose by a billion. Pre-tax profit margin, no surprises there, down 73%. Loan deposit ratio, again, this is a problem. It's gone up, but not high enough, 33%. So every 100 cities they receive, they give out only 33 in loans. Capital adequacy ratio, which we know what it means this, uh, now, is basically they are tier one and tier two capital as a percentage of their risk-weighted assets. So it's an interesting number. It's supposed to be higher than 13. The Bank of Ghana can lower that depending on how they feel about the economy. Be that as it may. Again, these numbers are important insofar as they compare the current year to the previous year. So more reds than more greens. But the key point is that the greens are in more important places than the reds. So yes, their impairment was 327%, but you need to compare that to what they were doing previously. So the answer to why they didn't do so badly is here. Look at these guys. Loans and advances. Again, the figure is the blue. Yes, investment in securities is higher, but the real key is in the percentages. All right? So if you look at the, the loan to customers, that's the black bar. Investment securities at amortized cost is blue. It's much higher. But at least you notice that the figures are not that much lower than the blues. So the blacks and the blues are playing an interesting role there. So UBA had a lower profit, but the exposure to government securities was not that bad. So this is one of the reasons why they didn't take such a big hit. Now, the third bank in our category is First Bank of Nigeria. This bank, of course, they, they used to be called First Bank in Nigeria, but in Ghana, you, you make it FBN. And they, they, they were established in 2013 because even though they've been in um, Nigeria for many, many years, they took over uh, ICB, which is a, a Ghanaian bank that has been in existence for years. So this bank is one of the most interesting banks we saw in our analysis. So in the context of Ghana, they're only 10 years old. So it's not such an old bank, all right? 26 branches. It's Nigerian as well. They made a profit. So far, three of our five profits are Nigerian banks. Keep an eye on that, all right? Now let's look at their behavioral trend. 2016. Just four million, very conservative, right? Even somebody who has a cold store in Tema with fish may make more profit than this bank, all right? So you think, ah, this bank was their problem, but they've grown in a very interesting way. So 2017, 18 million. 2018, they reduced a bit. 2019, this is where they started. So this is 50 million. For a bank, its size in Nigeria is a very big bank. So you say, oh, the Ghana bank, why? But 2022, 20, they sustained the profit. Boom, they doubled their profit in 2021. This is the trend we've seen for all the banks. And of course, a lot of them made losses. But these guys, I think these are the most impressive performance because their profit in 2022 was not too far from 20. So it tells you that the game everybody was playing in 2021, which led them to struggle in 2022, they weren't playing that game. So the shock of impairment did not affect these guys that much. So you look at it. So it's almost like the trend is still continuing. They are essentially on a steady rise. What is responsible for this? We'll come to that shortly. But here are a few more numbers. So these guys are the lowest droplets in terms of profit. So these people suffered the least. First Bank of Nigeria, right? Customer deposits. Think about it. It was less than a billion CDs in 2021. So that's one clue. It's not such a big bank in Ghana yet, all right, it's to 1.2 billion. That's very small, right? So it doubled in terms of deposits, but it's still very low. Total assets, again, modest, modest increase of a billion. Pre-profit tax margin dropped. Uh, loan to deposit ratio. Mm. So these guys at 68% are higher than even the average in Nigeria. Because in Nigeria, between January and August, the average loan deposit ratio was 63.5%. So in 2021, these guys were even doing better than Nigeria in terms of lending. But some way, somehow, in 2022, it reduced quite significantly. 
by a percentage of, um, yeah, about half of the percentage increase. But look at capital adequacy ratio. So these guys, they are deep where they come from. It's an interesting scenario. This 57 figure is the biggest we saw in our review. A lot of the banks were in the teens or early 20s. So this is a big number. This is also a big number, although it reduced. Don't forget we said this figure gives you a sense of how the banks are contributing to economic growth. On one hand, they are supposed to keep some of the money so they don't become illiquid. But the real reason why they were set up was to lend money they receive. So if this number is very low, the African average is above 70. Apart from this bank and another bank I'm coming to, a lot of the banks were below 50. This is not good. All right? This story, again, the percentage here is very big, but it's because prior to 2022, they hadn't been even doubling in this at all. All right? The figures are very small because this bank size relatively. But look at this. Loans and investments. Again, investment securities is higher than the loans, but you can see that the loans are rising. The real answer is in the percentages. All right? Investment in securities is black bar, much smaller than the loans and advances. So they're actually giving and making more money from lending to you than they are from lending to government. That is a significant point. So investment in securities, the black bar, it's rising, but the, the one that's longer is the blue bar. That's loans and advances. So it tells you that there's profit in doing the right thing, all right? Because these are impressive numbers. Look at 2017. 51% of their interest income is in loans and advances compared to 27%. Look at 2018. 64%. 2019, almost 80% of their interest income is from loans. They are giving the money to people. 2020, 70%. 2021, 63, even 2022, the year that everything went out of joint, a healthy 53%. So their maximum exposure to government, and in fact, we haven't even broken this into government and non-government. If you break this down, you probably notice that this black line will probably be shorter. So it's very clear that the banks, at least in the top five, and this is the third in that league, the banks that did not suffer too much from the, or suffer at all, from the impairments are the banks that are lending. So the blue bars are the money that you get. The black bars are the money that government gets, right? And the cash they keep is not that much. Let's do the two final banks in the top five category to just complete the story. So this bank, First Atlantic, it used to be called First Atlantic Merchant Bank before it was taken over. So 2011 is the starting point for analysis. 35, as I said, the average for these banks is 30 branches, all right? Nigerian, profit, absolutely. Look at their profit trend. 2016, started modestly, 29 million, 33. So they are, the profit is, is incremental. This clearly shows a, a trend, conservative profit growth, all right? There were banks doing like 400 million, 500 million, 800 million, and then boom, 700 million loss, right? 2019, 2 million. So it's like almost break even. What's going on there? COVID year, 103, massive profit. Same trend. Everybody hit the jackpot in 2021. Everybody hit the jackpot in 2021. And then look at 2022. They came down back to pre-2017 levels. But again, this is not as bad. They didn't make a loss, but clearly there was a dip. So when you go behind the numbers, you'll notice, and we'll come to that shortly, probably before tax, massive fall, because the green and the uh, other one is that steep. Customer deposits, most of them grew their deposits by a billion or two. Total assets, again, two billion. Profit before tax margin, it dropped as well. Loan deposit, this is very low. So again, where is the money going? This is a question the banks have to answer. 27%, which is already abysmal, now you are doing 24%. I'll be, I'll be happy to hear from the head of treasury and all the banks what is going on here. I'll be happy to 
give you a rejoinder. In fact, I'm really happy to have all of you come on to come and explain these statements when you feel like you are ready to do so. Capital adequacy, 18, is in the teens. So it's not like First Bank of Nigeria, which is 57. So what's going on here? What's the difference? Again, we come here, 1,000 and... 90 percent but this is the 21 to 2022 some other numbers in net interest uh, interest expense 83 percent in the red net profit also reduces by that margin this is where the cookie or the rubber meets the road so if you look at the loans and advances which is in the black fairly stable investment securities went up came down it's still much higher than loans which explains the steep fall in profit, because don't forget, this figure is a big one. The four here, I just wanted to show you this to explain. This, 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 is, this is big. 156 down to 22. So even though they similar the profit, it's very similar to those who did the reversal. And the answer is in what we just showed you, where we now explain the, the, the big dependence so again yeah here you go the blue investment securities goes up 57 so this is the conclusion depending on government in 2022 was a bad thing <laughs> right let's end with the fifth this bank actually made the second largest profit in the in the in the country but we sort of just grouped the nigerians together so this bank is not number five in profit volume this is actually number two this is a French bank, 1975, 40 branches, foreign ownership. They've been here before most of these guys came, All right? Made a profit, profit before tax, 92 million, 2016, jumped to 127, came down a bit in 2018, 2019, when the other banks were making very modest profits, 177, which is a good year for them, 2020, 222, 2021. So these guys were peaking. So look at them. They didn't fall that much. So very much like the uh, first uh, Bank of Nigeria, these guys are doing something that's insulating them from what everybody else is exposed to. Right? So this is an interesting one. 168 million in profit for a bank of its size is not bad at all. Profit before tax did fall, but only 40%. Customer deposits, a billion in increase total assets a billion a lot of the banks it's almost like they measure the growth pre-profit tax margin there was a drop loan to deposit this is absolutely the story here so for each bank there's a slide which tells the story i think for this bank we need to talk to them you guys are doing well you are doing something right because for every hundred euros or every hundred cities you you get 2021 you give 74 back in loans for every hundred you get in deposits you give 74 back in loans you give 73 back in 2022 so this is what we want this is what we want for loan deposit right and when we get into the loan book which luckily they published we'll see where their lending is going to because as i said not all the banks release their their their, their notes so this is amazing well done this is what we want to see all right this is great this is great, right? It fell, but that's not even the problem. It's, but their CAR, 16%. It's still 3% above the minimum threshold. Yes, they also suffered. So everybody had a red here. That's what that one, everybody suffered because of the 2022 problem. But we have learned to explain what causes this. So this is where it is. These are the absolute amounts. Look at that. Loans and advances is in the blue. Look at how high the blue is. And look at how low the black is. Black is the investment in securities. They say they are red, black, and rising. So red, black. Interesting. Look at this. They are very clear in their minds that their business is not investment in securities. It's a very conservative bank. It's from France. French, France is a very socialist country. All right. So maybe we can discuss with them their mindset about investment. But this is awesome. And if you look at it even this way, it's even better. All right. So their placements and investments in securities, the figure. But I think this is, this is where the, 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 the rubber meets the road. This is, in all the banks we analyze, this bank, the, 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 the focus on loans and advances is very rigorous here. 
All right. So far, we've shown you the top five banks and why they made profit. When we come back, we'll, we'll, we'll say that it's not just a Nigerian thing. Yes, four out of five of the most profitable were Nigerians. But some two Nigerian banks suffered a lot. We'll show you who, who these banks are. Then we will look at the loan book of the banks. Who are they giving the money to? And then we conclude with 10 key PowerPoints about the banking sector that we expect the governor, the association of bankers, and everybody else to focus on if we are to get our banks to become, for us, what we expect. We'll be right back. Pepsodent introduces Chaco and Lemon Essence. A unique combination of natural essences whitens teeth naturally for you and family because every smile matters. New Pepsodent Herbal. Introducing a unique combination of herbal extracts in an antibacterial toothpaste for strong teeth and healthy gums that protects your family and you. Every smile matters. Welcome back to The Point of View. So tonight, we are focusing on the banking sector. It's part two of our review of the financial statements that the banks released end of April this year, covering financial year 2022. The Bank of Ghana had asked that all the banks release their financials. We've analyzed about 21. Last week, we showed you the biggest losers, the five that had the most impairment, the five that had the big losses. And the big five banks in Ghana all made massive losses. Today, we are telling you that it's not all a negative story. Yes, the total profit of the top five is only 500 million. If you put the total impairments of the, the lowest five, it's in the billions. But first issue, four out of the top five were Nigerian banks. So is it a Nigerian thing? Not necessarily, because the Nigerian banks didn't do that well. All right, so let's look at access. This bank is a very interesting bank. Started in Ghana as Intercontinental Bank, and then I, I was told, and this is I know this because I, I was the MC when Intercontinental Bank was um, inaugurated in Ghana in 2000 and um, what year is this? Nine-ish, right? No, actually, no. It's 2005, Intercontinental Bank. Then Access took over in 2009. Now, the loan that set up Access Bank in Nigeria came from Intercontinental Bank. So that's an amazing story. So these guys took over Intercontinental Bank with a loan that Intercontinental Bank gave them. So it's a fascinating story. So I've always interested in this bank, right? Now, 54 branches, so it's larger than most of the Nigerian banks in terms of branch network. Nigerian ownership, they made a loss. What happened to them? Here's their profit behavior. 2016, 69 million. 2017, 59. 2018, 72, not that much profit. 2019, boom. Don't forget, a number of banks didn't do well in this year, but they did that well. 2019 was a good year for them. COVID year, one third of a billion. So, really good. 2022, half a billion. Wow. These guys were on the rise. They were growing organically. Things were looking really great. What happened? Boom. Four tenths to fifths of a billion in losses. So something obviously went wrong here because everything was looking fine until this year. And of course, this is the same story there with GCB, APSA, Ecobank, Stambic, all the banks we reviewed in the previous episode. So that's what happened. So we're saying, yes, Four out of the five are Nigerian, but some Nigerian banks didn't do that well. So when we go behind the numbers again, 180% loss in PBT, customer deposits. Everybody rolls their customer deposits. So you can't fault people. People are sending their money to the banks. People are giving them money, right? Total assets. And why wouldn't they? The banks are making profit. The Ghanaian banking sector is the most profitable banking sector in SSA. I mean, that, that's not even debatable. So obviously, they'll get more customer deposits. Pre-tax profit margin came down. Loan deposit, that's the problem, right? This is not good. This is not good. That's abysmal. 25, 22%. Right? It's, it's, I mean, this, this is not good. There's a, there's a problem here. This is not good. All right? What is happening to their, their loans? Why, why, aren't they giving, why aren't they giving the monies to those who need the monies? Okay? Capital adequacy ratio... 
very, very unhealthy. So this bank is well capitalized. This bank is well capitalized. Their parent company will obviously make sure they are well capitalized. All right. Here is the challenge. 1013% impairment loss on financial assets the year in question to the previous year. We've explained what this means in previous episodes. How did this happen? Look at that. Their impairments were very low throughout the period until 2022. All right. Their investment in securities has been big. So these guys have not been doing what the others do. These guys have been giving government money. In 2022, they pay the price. We, this is an important point because of crowding out. This is an important point because of financial intermediation. We may be sound like a broken record, but this is a very important point to repeat. Right? Now, this is where it even looks more interesting. When you now break it down into percentages, loans and advances have reduced from a high of 74% of their interest income to 26%. Treasury bills and government securities have, this is, this is one of the best contrasts of what is wrong with our banking sector. 22% in 2016, all the way to 73% in 2022. So this was going down, this was coming up, which is generally the trend for a lot of the banks that struggled. So clearly, the model has to change. And this is important to point out because this is a Nigerian bank as well. Lots of capital from that country, but this is not what you want to see. Let's deal with the other one in that set. This bank, in terms of their impairments, they suffered. Their loss was about half a billion. This bank is Zenith Bank, established in 2005, 40 branches, right? Nigerian bank made a loss. What happened? 2016, 203, so this is good. 2017, 251. 2018, so this bank is doing well. They are rising nicely. 2019, a lot of people didn't do too well here. They did 353, so they are robust. They are strong. 2020, in COVID, they are almost half a billion. 2021, they came down a bit, which is interesting because most people made their most profits in 2021. A lot of the explanation for that could be that most of them made their profits from investment in government securities. Look at 2022. It's almost a shellacking. Over half a billion cities in loss. This is a serious problem. How did they get here? We'll get there shortly. Here are other numbers that just add up. Profit before tax has reduced 2 to 266%. Customer deposits have gone up 6 to 8 billion. Assets have gone up by a billion as well to 10. Pre profit tax margin, no surprises there, come down. Loan deposit again, like Access Bank. This is not good. I mean, SG is doing loan deposit of 73, 74. Zenith is doing 22. This, in Nigeria, the average is 63. So how come in Ghana it's 23? So Access and Zenith have to explain to us what's going on here, and I'm sure they'll have an explanation. CAR is also strong. Obviously, it's a well-capitalized bank, so no problem there. All right? This, I will jump this and come here, where I will now explain what's going on. Again, the black is long, the blue is short. You're seeing a trend, right? Their impairments have been low. So, they, so essentially what this means is that they've been getting away with giving more of their money to government until 2022. So every year, they give more to uh, investment securities, little to um, depositors. It's going fine to, 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 to ordinary lenders. And then in 2022, my, that's what happened. So again... Loans and advances have been on a low trajectory, and then investment in securities have been on a high trajectory, which is what brought them here. So we have, we have proved beyond all reasonable doubt that that is the problem with our banks. Now, let's go into the loan book. I think this is a very important part of the presentation because the bank's job is to efficiently allocate finance to sectors of the economy that really need it, right? So you need to look at where they are lending. Now, we didn't use any particular metric to select these banks that we're about to review. This was purely based on the banks that released their notes. So usually what the bank will put in the newspaper is a summary of their financial statement. But if you go on to, if they are on a uh, capital market, you go to the Ghana Stock Exchange or to their website, they can then give you the notes, which now tell you the details of what they did. So if a bank is doing well, it's not because they are a friend. It's just because they publish their notes. That's how come we're able to use this. So this is our loan portfolio analysis. This is very important for the economy. Since I'm on Zenit, now... 
what we've done is we've averaged their lending in various sectors and we have highlighted as green the sector that appears to be their focus for the past six to seven years. So from 2016 to 2022, this bank has been lending to manufacturing. This is great, right? Because if you look at the categories, we are talking about mining and construction, telecoms, energy, retail and consumer, public sector, financial institutions. This is wonderful, right? Manufacturing is getting on average the largest share of their loans. So yes, they are not lending as much, they are giving money to government, but in terms of the amount they actually give, they are lending to a sector that is catalytic for economic development, which is why we need to do this analysis. So it's not just a question of where are you making your interest income for? So that's question one. Yes, you may be lending to government more than lending to ordinary people, but what you are lending, who are you lending it to? This is very impressive. The second sector there is retail and consumer, which is the black bar. So for each of the next banks, just look at the green, right? In terms of the amount of money they've been giving, these guys, you can say, it's a manufacturing-focused bank. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. For those of us who understand that to move from third world to first world, you transition from agri to manufacturing before you go to services, this is simply brilliant, okay? UBA, oil and gas appears to be their mainstay. Again, look at the green. Yes, in 2016, they were more into uh, transport and communication, but that subsequently has been overtaken by oil and gas. So this is an oil and gas. We are not saying that's all they do. We are saying that when you look at the average, so this is 2016-2022, the average distribution of their loans between manufacturing, finance, are Greek, building and construction, oil and gas. These guys, oil and gas seems to be important to them. All right? And you only find this when you do their loan portfolio analysis. This is important. We are not saying that's all they do, but it gives you a clue. Of course, the Nigerian bank, oil and gas is big in Nigeria. It doesn't tell you the, destiny, the, 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 the nationality of the person receiving the loan, but this is a very important clue. Don't forget UBA, Tony Lumelu in the, in the past. So this is a very important points to note that this bank values oil and gas. Yes, it does some work in services and also transportation and communication, but this bank's real focus over the past six years. So for example, in 2022, it wasn't oil and gas, right? So it's very important to point out this is an average that we are doing. We are not saying that's what they give all the money to because in 2022, Manufacturing, commerce, and finance did get quite a bit. But we're saying that over the past six or seven years, this bank's interest is in oil and gas, and they will not deny that. All right? GT Bank, this bank did best in 2022 in terms of profit. Where are they lending money to? Services. But it's a, a very nuanced picture because services was much smaller and it's grown significantly from 2020. Look at 2021. Almost half of all the money they, they lent went to services. Again, some of these definitions are fluid because services, some bank can characterize service in the differences, but these are general categorizations. So this bank prefers to lend to services. All right? So here they are. It started out lending more to the mining initially, then they flirted with commerce and finance, some construction, but from 2020, services have dominated. And when you look at the chart, the green tells you that this bank has been doing services. So we've seen somebody doing manufacturing, somebody doing oil and gas, and these guys, they are into services, as against transport, commerce, electricity, construction. So far, Agri is not even showing. So far, Greek is not showing, sure, you know, guys. Cal Bank. Now, this is one of the banks that suffered highly from impairments in our last episode. It's a Ghanaian bank, all right? What is their loan book looking like? Construction. I was quite impressed with this. I was very happy to see this because this is a Ghanaian bank, and it looks like for them, they want to build. In fact, if you go to the University of Ghana, some of their big hostels, the new hostels, this um, 
uh, hostels like Le Man and Co. They had like four new big halls. Carl Bank played a very significant role there. No surprises there, right? Yes, there are other sectors that they were focused on in the past, but this is a nice story, all right? So those of you who have been wondering which sectors are important to our banks, based on our calculation, the, the, the average loan book of Carl Bank from 2016 tells us that construction is where their bread is buttered. It's an interesting story. I wonder what they will say about that. Kofi Siabi, give me a call. Let me hear from you. Is this the right story or are there other stories? Although I, I recognize that in 2022, you did a lot of services as well. You've, done, you've been big on services too, all the way through. So services have been big as well. This one, 690, 605, thousands. So actually in 2022, services was the biggest. But we're saying that when we average the five years, you like construction. You like construction. It shouldn't be a bad thing. But services is also very important to you as is transport, storage, and communication. So we're talking about buses, people buying cars, and all of that. Access Bank, Big Bank, Nigerian Bank didn't do too well in the year under review. But there's a good story there. So they and Zenith are the two Nigerian banks that we said did not do as well as the other four. But interestingly, they are the guys who, in my view, are lending to the sector that we need more money to go to. There's a story there that we have to pursue. Yes, in some years, they didn't do the biggest in manufacturing, but when you look at the past five years on average, it's been manufacturing that's been their focus. So we need to ask where the Ghanaian banks are putting their money, because this is an interesting number, all right? From 238 million to 270, all the way to 323 in 2020, 192. But they do, this, 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 this bank has one of the most balanced portfolios of all because services is strong. Public sector is also strong there. All right. They also do some construction lending, which is not too bad. The bottom, uh, the, the bar at the bottom. So the construction is also pretty strong there. But still no agri. I, I, I don't know what's happening to agri in this, all of this discussion. All right, I don't know what's happening to agri, but manufacturing is the big, big thing for these guys. Let's let's look at this bank that did very well. French bank, second most profitable in the year under review, 2022. Who is SG lending to? Woo! Transport, storage, and communication. Could it be that a lot of the French car companies are taking money from these guys? But it's an interesting thing to see them. It's, it's a very clear pattern. Look at that. From about a third of their loan book to almost 60% of their loan book is to transport, storage, and communications. So this is a big story there. They do do some agri, I should admit. So they are one of the few banks that agri does feature. Agri forestry and fishing. Again, the division of agri can be very fluid. So agri is not necessarily lending to farmers. It could be to a fertilizer company. It could be to somebody doing uh, agri inputs. So some of these definitions, but, but it's interesting to note that at least Agri is showing, right? Agri is showing because for some of them, Agri didn't even show, which is a problem. Now look at that. Transport, storage, and communication. Overwhelmingly, that's where their money is going. And these are important questions for policy for the central bank as well, all right? These are important points, all right? This Nigerian bank that did so impressively, first bank of Nigeria, Commerce and finance. So yes, they did well, but they are lending money to many people. <laughs> so you see that when you come to the loan book, it tells, it gives you a more complete picture. I'm not saying lending to commerce and finance is bad, but you want money to go to the real sector, right? Not necessarily to the financial sector. So yes, they, they manage their risk well. Their profit is healthy and rising. They, they respect the single obligor thing. So they don't get too much exposure to one lender, but a lot of their money is going into commerce and finance, all right? Although in 2022, a lot of it went into services. Services, it reduced drastically. So I don't know what they saw in 2022. So it's like, we are giving all our money to commerce and finance, but in 2022, 
We're going to give money to service. We're not going to give money to commerce and finance. They need to explain what happened here. But when you start looking at these things, it, it gives you a deeper dive into some of the deeper seated focus areas, priorities, you know, their viewpoints, whether home country issues. Very interesting. So these guys are into commerce and finance. This is another Ghanaian bank, all right, Omni Bisek Bank. Uh, this bank, uh, I think, is Asiedu, formerly of Zenith, who's the CEO. Where is their lending to services? All right. So they are into a lot of services. The, the green is very clear. Although they do some work in manufacturing as well, and then they also do some work in services, in, 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 in mining and querying, right? Mining and querying. But these guys, services, services services all right so so far we've shown you some of our banks and what they've done in terms of how they got here when we come back we're going to tell you 10 things we think should happen our observations leading to some conclusions all right what do these numbers say about the state of health of our banks what are some of the structural issues that need to be addressed and how can our banks learn from this big impairment, embarrassment of 2022, so that they don't repeat these mistakes in the coming years? Stay with us. Finally, anyone can become a household. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> you will flip a real estate gaming platform that allows you to play and stand a chance of winning a house or cash or consolidated yeah. funds, such as savings towards a house. Simple and easy to play. Visit www.yougoflip.com. Buy a ticket to enter the game. Wait for the end of the game to enjoy the win. Anyway, and win. Flip it or own it. You go flip. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Play responsible, not for persons below 18 years, and gaming can be addictive. Welcome back to The Point of View. Tonight, we're looking at our banks in our part two of our review of the financial statements of our banks. We've shown you the most profitable banks. We've analyzed some of the Nigerian banks. Four of the top five profit makers were Nigerian. Two of the big losers were also Nigerian. We've also discussed the loan book of these banks. Some are into construction. So far, of all the banks who have released their notes, Agric doesn't even exist, <laughs> right? Which one of Agric employs the most people? Services also doing pretty well so here are our 10 takeaways now number one we're saying most of the banks published their q1 for this year and they say they are all making profit so we should be happy we should clap for them now we are saying that 2022 loss that you made is not a one-off it it reveals a flaw in what we've done as an industry so Let's not be in a hurry to say because first quarter of 2023 is profit, we are at Uhuru. No. What we need to do is to say, what kind of risk analysis have we been doing? How did we get here? And what can we do structurally to prevent this type of thing? Now, in 2014-2015, the BDCs and their challenges nearly collapsed the banking sector. Can we say that what the government is doing with borrowing from the banks is the same as what the BDCs did in 2020, 2014? So this is not yet Uhuru. Now, the 2021 annual public debt report, which the finance ministry released, showed that an average of 50% of government of Ghana's domestic debt is held by the banking sector. That is crazy. Half of government's uh, domestic debt, excluding standard loans, is the banking sector. 30% commercial banks, 20% central bank. So the banks and their regulator together hold half of all government debt. 
Now, I'm going to compare that to other sectors. All right? This includes non-banks like firms and institutions, rural banks. Insurance companies hold less than a percentage of government debt. SNIT holds 0.3%. Rural banks, 1%. Individual investors, 9.2% for 2021. Right? Now, the non-banking sector holds 30% of government debt. The banks hold half. Foreign investors hold 16%. That doesn't make sense. Right? The banks hold 50% of government of Ghana debts. This is unbelievable. Right? So that's a problem. Now, persistently high interest rates and interest rate spreads have led to highly profitable banking sector until 2022. Now, the MPC is meeting. Interest rate spreads, we've explained this many, many times. When you give them money, the amount they pay you back as your uh, interest versus when they lend you money, how much they charge you, that's the spread. That spread has made Ghanaian banks the most profitable until last year. Now, even though the Ghanaian banks are supposed to be profitable because the spreads are high, they were still not lending money to people. They were lending money to government, and they suffered for it, right? So this is a point that nobody can dispute. However, the growing appetite for GOG securities huh, for most of the banks became their ultimate undoing. So we are saying that 0.3 notwithstanding, they opted to go for 0.4. They're already making profit here, but they still decided to go here for more profit. And in looking for more profit, boom, they made a loss. So there's obviously a conversation to be had about that. Again, we said this last two weeks. We need to say this again. Loan deposit ratios are mostly below 50%, except for a couple of banks. The Nigerian average is 63% last year. The African average is 75%. Most of the banks were in the 20s. There's something obviously wrong. I've seen a few people saying that we need a more nuanced discussion about loan deposit ratio. I'm happy for that. Ghana Association of Bankers, John Ewa, come and explain to me why most of your bank's loan deposit ratio is in the 30s. Why is that happening? You need to come and explain to us, Mr. Ewa, on behalf of the association. Right? This is too low. This is a big, it's a big, it's a big problem. So this is point number five. Now let's go to point number six. As a consequence of point number five, lending to the real sector continues to suffer. Right? And this stifles economic growth. This is, a, this is a point that's a mundane point. We all know this, right? If they lend to the private sector, and of course, the private sector pays. So I know that there are discussions around whether people pay, but uh, non-performing loans are falling. Whether that's a consequence of lower lending, we don't know. But the banking sector is supposed to drive economic growth. We are on an IMF program. On Thursday, the announcement to be made at a, at a press briefing in Washington. Ghana needs to grow very fast. We can't be sharing money between government and banks and everybody else doesn't benefit. So that's a problem. Okay. I've made this point. In the banks who released their notes, about eight or nine of them, Agric barely shows. So we pay a lot of lip service to Agric. We are waiting for ADB to release their notes. We are waiting for GCB to release their notes and some of the bigger local banks. But this is a big problem. Gersal has been set up to provide guarantee for the banks who lend to Agric. Gersal became very active a year and a half ago. We are waiting to see whether that will affect the Agric. But for now, Agric is not doing well at all. So we'll wait to see. But this is another takeaway for us. Now, the other question is, you know, a lot of people say, look, why will banks go and give their money to government in short term and fixed income? It's because our capital markets are not attractive. Ghana Stock Exchange, what's going on? Why aren't banks going to invest in equities. What's wrong? Right? So we're feeling that there's some part of the problem with our capital markets that they have to address. So, Abuna Moa, we want to hear from you. What are you doing to make the capital market attractive so that these guys will also invest in shares? So, MTN so shares, some of the banks are going to invest there. Right? There are other uh, stocks on the, on the capital market that if they were doing well, would have allowed the banks to spread their portfolio. Why are they just doing lending to citizens and then to government? Why are the capital markets playing a big, a big role here? So we feel that one of the defenses for the banks is that the capital markets are not active. So the leadership of the capital markets need to come to the party and talk to us about what they can do for the banks and other people who have excess money. This is point number eight. 
Now, this point is a point that is a more policy discussion, right? All our banks, look, we used to have merchant banks. <laughs> we used to have um, retail and it's, uh, commercial banks, consumer banks. We used to have uh, different type of banks with different focus. We, have, we are talking about development bank now. We are now having all our banks say they are all play all, universal banks. So the loan portfolio analysis tells you that the, the places that we need to spend money, we are not spending there. Everybody, everybody is giving money to services. Some are doing manufacturing. Nobody's giving to a Greek. That's a consequence of universalizing all our banks. That's not the way to go. What you need to do is to look at which sectors are key sectors that you want to drive growth. Which sectors have the most employment elasticity? Drive the banks to spend money there. A Greek is one. But everybody's a universal bank. ADB is a universal bank. GCB is a universal bank. Everybody's playing all. I think after a few years of doing this universal bank thing, we should review, is it helping us? I don't think it is. We, there's an election coming. Let's discuss it. Maybe we should go back to, we used to have Carl Merchant Bank. We used to have ADB doing ADB things. And then final question. Do our banks really appreciate risk? Now, these are very difficult questions to ask because banking is conservative, right? So you can say it was their risk appetite that led them to government, but the government didn't pay, so the risk calculation has been proven to be wrong. I've said before that if FRS were being strictly applied, some of our banks would not even be standing. So the BOG needs to ask itself, do we need a different matrix for risk assessment? Are the Nigerian banks using a different risk matrix than our Ghanaian banks are? For which reason, fewer of them suffered. What about the French bank? They weren't that exposed. Are we all using the same IFRS? What are the risk managers saying? These are industry issues that they have to address. A strong banking sector will drive economic growth. So far, their profitability as the indicator of strength is false. Because they made a lot of profits, but we haven't benefited. If they are to drive our growth, they have to focus on other things. So that will be our show for tonight. We've been analyzing in our second part episode more of the financials of our banks. We looked at the top five profitable banks in Ghana. We went to the facts behind the figures. We've also been looking at their loan books, very clear in terms of where they've been lending. And we've ended with 10 power points. We hope the duty bearers are listening and the banks will take this in good faith to effect the changes that will make the banks the driving force of Ghana's economic recovery. My name is Ben Adavle. A big thank you to our partners who worked on the analysis with us, FinCap Securities, the research team headed by Selassie Edu. Incredible work, many sleepless nights to bring this cogent analysis. Selassie, thank you. Also to Finex Skills Hub, the visualization masters in Ghana. Bernard, amazing work. Bernard and team, thank you so much. Bernard and Daniel and team, thank you so much for your support. And of course, Drew Duncan and the rest of the team. It's been a team effort bringing this analysis. We'll see you next time with more analysis as and when they become necessary. My name is Bernard Avle. Bye-bye.